Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, I'd like to welcome you all to the 16th Zurich Film Festival, and not just that, to the ZFF, the ZFF Masters with Johnny Depp. Johnny, welcome. Pleasure to have you here. Please take a seat to my left. See over there. Your microphone is here. Ah, oh, welcome back to Zurich. Uh, you've been here several times. You were here two years ago. Uh, the world has changed quite a bit since then, this year at least. Um, I guess it's been a difficult year for a lot of people, also for the film industry. So what does it mean to you to be back here in Switzerland now, to be able to present your film the documentary about Shane McGowan in front of a live audience? Um, it's... Hi, by the way. <laughs> hi, everybody. Um, it's kind of... Sur it's very surreal because... Um, to, to present a film about someone that... Uh, that you've known for a very long time and that you've... you have... Uh, um, love for that that uh, is 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 uh, and respect for. Um, I mean, I, Shane is to me one of the the great poets of certainly the twentieth century, twenty first century. He's in a unique place in history, I believe. <laughs> but he's someone that I've known. Um, and from the first second that I met him, I was sure, and everyone around him was sure that he would be dead within a week. <laughs> um, he's not dead. It's been 30 years. <laughs> he's not dead. He's tough. Um, so the, the, the great gift of, of presenting um, this, essentially this, this, this sort of love letter uh to an old friend is uh makes it ev all the more um you know touching warming that people are responding so uh, so well to the film um and seeing this man for the first time uh in re in the reality you know it's uh it's something very special for all of us Absolutely, I, I, I got to see the movie and uh, I didn't know Shane that well, so uh, we'll, we'll be talking about the film. But I'd love to welcome as well Victoria. Shane's wife is here with us, so a big round of Swiss applause for Victoria. <laughs> thank you for joining us here in Zurich and, and joining, obviously, Johnny. Oh, thank you, thank you. There, please, please. This man is this man is the good-looking man. Thank He's you. He's a so very much. handsome man. No, no, no. Please, I said Johnny is in a league of his own. He's in a league of his own. Um, because I'm two thousand years old. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about. I mean, you've you've already said uh, Shane obviously um, has given us his music. He's a friend of yours. Tell us about those early days when you guys met, and and maybe some anecdotes from those early days. <laughs> Whatever you're allowed to share. <laughs> Um, let's see, the f f very first time, I, admir I had admired uh, Shane's music his, and uh, his, his lyrics especially, but his, uh, yeah, this, this raging kind of uh, Irish, um, yeah, there, there was rebellion in, in every song, there was truth in every song. Um, so I had fallen in love with the Pogues. I'd, I'd loved the band for a long time and Shane. <coughs> I was in England uh, with a dear friend who's now uh, made his exit, a guy named Jerry Conlon, and uh, met Victoria. And uh, Victoria brought me to meet Shane. Uh, he was in a pub, no, a studio. It was a studio. Which was just, it was exactly like a pub, because <laughs> Shane was there. Um, and he was, he was, 
sitting on a pool table. Hold, he had a guitar in his left hand and he had a pint of beer in his right hand and he was teetering like this. <laughs> so he was sort of doing this very slow metronome thing and uh, sh Victoria introduced us and he's like, <laughs> I figured I was all right. Um, uh, and then, so I guess for the first few days, I didn't understand a word he said to me. Um, but then I got used to it. And it, and it wasn't just the accent. It, it was his uh, special additions to the accent, you know, he would, things would help him. Um, and and I, I, you, you instantly see what a sweet, uh, deep, loving, caring, uh, hypersensitive, soul he's a beating heart you know and there are those as we've always admired those uh, with such beating hearts like the you know the hypersensitives the the Baudelaire's the uh, Edgar Allan Poe's the James Joy the Brendan Behan's the you know um, he has medicated himself since he was probably six or five or something, you know. Um, it's, I think for some life is just a little too, too much. It just, it burns when it hits you, you know. I think he's one of those. Tell, so, yeah. t sorry to interrupt, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, tell us a bit about the pokes and, and the amazing music he writes. I mean, you, you, you say and others say he's a poet, but he doesn't like to call himself a poet, I think. Is that right? No, he doesn't. He, do, you know, he doesn't. Um, which I understand uh, why he wouldn't want to call himself a poet. It's, 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 um, it's too big a league to join on your own. You know, you can't, uh, somebody else has to, say the words, the person can't say the words. I would never, when people, you know, I mean, I guess I'm an actor, <laughs> but, uh, but that doesn't in any way, uh, shape or form make me, to me, an artist, you know. I, w I would aspire, I aspire to be an artist. I aspire to make interesting things um so you approach everything i approach everything with i suppose yeah the, the the eye of an artist with a but i but i wouldn't call myself an artist what shane's accomplished with his his lyrics with his words with his intent uh he he served a a few generations and generations to come with his music. He's uh, he's given us uh, a whole lot more than um, just the music. It, so, yeah, I understand why he doesn't call himself a poet, but sorry to tell him he is. You know, he's a poet. You um, also uh, performed the thing on his first solo album and and directed one of his videos. And there's a fun story to that. How how did that come about? Which fun story? <laughs> <laughs> or, or it was like a last minute thing. He asked you to direct it. Could you direct it like on Monday or what was it? It was like. Yeah. Um, I, it w I was in New York City and I was in some hotel room. Uh, I think it was, yeah, it was Friday. It was like a Friday evening. And Shane called me, found me in my hotel room. And said, uh, Johnny, what are you? What are you doing? <laughs> I said, um, nothing. Are you busy on the weekend? No. Well, what's going on? Um, and then he just said, Would you? W would you? Would you? Uh, you want to make a video? I said, Sure. Uh, yeah. I, f I figured he wanted me to be in a video or something of his. <coughs> so I said, Sure, I'll do it. And he said, Good. I want you to direct it. Okay. When? Uh, when can you do it? 
I don't know, man. Like it might take a while. Can you do it on Monday? <laughs> sure. So, so yeah, I, I I hustled and I made a few calls and I got uh, together a, a small crew, and uh, sort of started messing around with the idea of uh, some you know some story to put inside the video, something you know. So. Uh, yeah, I, 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 we miraculously got it together, and there we were. We found ourselves in this this bar that we'd chosen to shoot in, and uh, I, I thought it would be great to make Shane this very dashing, very cool, super handsome, decked out, you know, bartender with the sh with the shades and the whole bit, and he looked like. He looked like a mafioso, you know, he just looked beautiful. And then to take myself and uh, wrap myself up even more and, uh, uh, yeah, make me the uh, the loser, um, which was fun. Um, so, yeah, we did, th we did that video in, I think we shot it in about a day. Yeah, and then we cut it together and sent it out. He seemed happy, and I did. I did play on the um, on Shane's first record uh, with the Popes, and uh, I think my credit on that. I think my credit on that record was weird guitar noises, <laughs> <laughs> or weird noises. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I did. Um, I did. Shane was making that album, and. Uh, we were all, we were all drinking a little bit. We were all drinking a lot. Uh, I had a bottle of wine in my hand, and we were listening to playback of uh, one of the tracks. <laughs> and I was leaning on the desk, the you know, the mixing board, and this bottle of wine just went <laughs> and shattered all over this <laughs> mixing board. And it made the most horrendous noise, <laughs> you know, you know. And Shane goes, "What was that? Did you get it? That was great. What was that?" <laughs> that that was the sound of you getting about ten days off from the studio. <laughs> um, so yeah, I screwed them over uh, and broke their mixing board, and they couldn't record for a while. I tried to forget that. I still haven't. You know. It's not going away. Let's talk about um, <coughs> the documentary, Crock of Gold, a few rounds with Shane McGowan. Um, was this an idea that you've had for, for a while to do this? Uh, how did the project come about, and was it easy to convince Shane to do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was not easy to convince Shane to do it. It's not easy to convince Shane to do anything, <laughs> except have a drink with you. <laughs> um, even that's not easy sometimes. Uh, it, it came, how was it born? I mean, we ah, it's the 60th, yeah, the 60th birthday. And what the chain say? Well, see, the, the good news is, if 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 I if if I had brought it up, Shane would have gone fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. If Victoria brings it up, oh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. And it wasn't. <laughs> no, it was fun. But but then it was quite it's unpredictable, right? I heard that it wasn't. I mean, it was not like Shane. We're shooting tomorrow, 8 a.m. Let's yeah. go, right? It was. It was nothing like that. I don't think it'll ever be like that. I don't. With Shane, I, Shane did a a, um, a cameo in this film. I did the Libertine many years ago, and uh, we dressed him like sort of with this cape and this wonderful costume and. And he's singing some ballad, uh, um, 
He was on time for that. <laughs> he was on time. He was on time. He sh he's we can still make it work. Uh, no, I, I, I know uh, someone that, that can maybe make it happen. I don't know. Oh, man. Shane would be, th I mean, it would be amazing. But yeah, that was uh, um, when, I mean, you know, when uh, we did the 60th birthday uh, in Dublin, and all these people came from all over the world to, to um, yeah, to, to pay their respects to Shane, to, to be there for this very special night uh, with the president of Ireland, um, acknowledging, basically acknowledging Shane as a, as a national uh, treasure, you know, uh, which he is. Um, I think the next move is to get a big statue for him. We need a big bronze statue in Tipperary or ah, Dublin, make it a huge one in Dublin. But I think Bono was performing, right? And a whole, I mean, yeah, yeah. Bono, uh, amongst others. Bono played uh, Nick Cave, Bobby Gillespie, um, Sinead. Sinead was amazing. Um, God, there were so many people. I mean, a lot of the poets. It was a wonderful, it was an incredible band. I got to play uh, uh, guitar on, um, what was, it? Rain, was it Rainy Night in Soho? On Rainy Night in Soho with... Um, and Bono sang. Yeah, it was nice. It was a very ni it, so. She's right. That that really did instigate that. Yeah. He was. He was. He was. Yeah. He was visually touched by that whole thing. It was. It was. That's overload, man. Yeah. How was your 60th birthday? Oh, you know, Bono was there, and Johnny Depp was playing the guitar, and you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just my 60th birthday. You know. Um. Obviously, we don't want to give away too much from the film, but um, Shane, I think he, he, he wouldn't want it to be just an interview with him. It was conversations with, with various different people. Who decided which, you know, who decided which people were the right people to have these, or yeah, conversations with him? Was it Shane himself? I mean, I know you're in it, and obviously you, Victoria, and... Yeah, uh, I, th I don't know who, who chose all, all the people. It was probably Victoria, it was probably Julian, it was probably Stephen Duders, um, our producer. Um, Stephen chose everyone and we'd like we'd like him to tell us why. <laughs> no. um, but I, I thought it was a really, you know, it was a great round roundup of, of various uh, uh, types of people. Um, it, it was it was uh, it was v widespread. I mean, it was um, sort of traditional, the traditional kind of Irish to to this wonderful punk side, um, and everybody sort of represented their yeah, I suppose their place in Shane's life or Shane's place in their life. Everybody everybody took it very well. I'm lucky. I was very lucky because. Uh, probably because Shane just feels sorry for me now. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I was very lucky in that I am well aware of what it's like to the difference between an interview and a conversation. An interview is essentially someone asking you questions that they don't care about the answer. Um, and a conversation, you feed off one another. So if if anyone had ever mentioned the uh, uh, the word interview to Shane, he would have been out of that room so fast that it would have made uh, made people fall over. Yeah, no, no, he no interviews. It was just conversation, and also letting him be silent. You know, uh, a, there are a lot of moments of silence that in the film on Shane's part, that, that where it speaks volumes, uh, the silence um, becomes more important than, than the words because you see this, well, you'll see, you see, you see his heart, you, s you, see, you see that man, you see that special thing that we, <coughs> that I've been able to 
call a friend for 30 years, you know. Um, yeah. I said Julian. I, s I said Julian. That Julian maybe chose the. Um, the one thing, yeah, no, I mean, uh, Julian Temple came in with uh, fire, man. He came in with fire and intensity. He came in with. Because he's, I mean, he's known Shane for a very, very long time. He, he's photographed Shane during the the days of early days of punk rock, Pistols, the Clash, all that. Um, and so, so um, Julian had done the rock and roll swindle and all that. Uh, so when he came into this, it was like uh, he was, he was, he was. Yeah, man, he was, he was, um, he, he already had a, 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 this, these, these very strong <coughs> sort of ideas and visions uh, were coming to him and, uh, and ultimately, Shane is a, Shane's a, a, it's, it's, there's no, even the conversations, you know, not interviews, but uh, conversations, it's about capturing, you know, it's really about capturing, uh, those moments, and which requires a lot of patience, especially if sometimes Shane doesn't feel like giving you a moment. <laughs> um, but what I, I think the way Julian uh, moved the film forward and moved Shane's story forward was was really re realizing what an Irish uh, it, it is the true story of um, a great sort of Irishman. Um, so it's the film itself has this deeply uh, connected. Uh, yeah, there's there's connective tissue to Ireland, and it's 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 a very Irish film, I think. Absolutely. I mean, uh, not only did I learn so much about Shane's life and and the Pokes, but I learned a lot about Irish culture and history. And I mm. usually consider myself knowledgeable about history, but I I learned so much. So it was really interesting. Uh, Julian Temple, by the way, is the director of this this fantastic film. Um, one, I guess, final question on the film is what was Shane's reaction in the end when he saw it? Was he... <laughs> you're laughing. <laughs> I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> Victoria's laughing. <laughs> Victoria. <Here. laughs> no? I'm sure he just went... You know, like... Bollocks! <laughs> he, he thought it was interesting? <laughs> no. It's always but nice. He found it interesting. <laughs> Entertaining. <laughs> Was there, there was there any emotion whatsoever? <laughs> Not much. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. No, there's an in there's an incredible amount of footage that's never been seen before. Yeah, fantastic. Charlie. Yeah. She said she. She, she said she said that when Shane saw my name on the what was it Shane saw my name on the in the credits or whatever and he's and what what did he say he said he was like got what <laughs> he was he was he was beaming happy that's just because he was probably thinking of about ten things to uh, insult me with <laughs> later. Best one of the best things anyone's ever said to me. We 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 Steve and Gene. We all flew into, uh, where was it? Am uh, Copenhagen, for 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 Shane and Victoria's w wedding, and we arrived there, and as 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 uh, as we make our way up to Shane and Victoria, Shane just looks at he looks at me and he goes, "You look like a fucking pimp." <laughs> Suit on, you know, a fedora. <laughs> Pimp. You know, like <laughs> What's that? He calls me white trash, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I, I wish we could <laughs> be there on one of those nights. Um, well, you, you definitely get a glimpse into sort of not only their friendship, but, uh, yeah, just Shane's life uh, with this wonderful documentary premiering tonight here in Zurich. Um, I'm sure that some of the fans here would love to hear a little bit about your career. Um, you've kind of made this uh, 
yeah, this this decision at a, at an early stage in your career that you would only want to do films that that you want to do and not focus on uh, box office and and whatnot. And and for people who who don't work in the industry, the industry is often and more often than not driven by money. So I think it's quite an achievement that you were able to sort of focus on 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 the art more so than than the money. Tell us a bit about when was that time in your life when you were was that a specific moment where you were like you know what. I, I, life is too short to do stuff I don't want to do. Well, yeah, the, w what happened really to me was um, having been a musician for you know since the age of twelve, uh, and and I mean crazy, you know, started playing nightclubs at thirteen, and was playing them regularly at the age of fifteen, dropped out of school. Um, Worked various jobs, all that, but uh, um, I, I, th I think like having been a musician and having that be the first, the true love of my life, when it came into the, the idea of doing a movie, um, I wasn't an actor, so I didn't care. Really. You know, I made a couple of films, but I didn't care. It's you know, it was somebody wanted to give me. I don't know at the time it was like uh, $1,800 a week. So I was like, yeah, I'll take it. I don't care. Well, it doesn't matter because I'm not, this is not my thing. So, um, and then somewhere along the line, uh, I found myself stuck on that road and realized that the music was have to, was going to have to take a back seat um, somehow. And uh as i st started out as a musician playing writing whatever my 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 i suppose my outlook on the acting <laughs> you know becoming an actor was well if i'm going to become an actor i i want to be um i i, I want to be the punk rock actor I <laughs> you know I don't want to do, uh, I don't want to do these uh, formulaic um, um, uh, plodding, you know, three act structure, character arcs and motivations. And I didn't, I, I just, I thought I'm going to do what the things that I want to do. Uh, and more so after I got off the television series, that was really the impetus for me to say, okay, no more. I don't want to be poster boy. So uh, that's that was really, Crybaby was like putting, taking my first step in it on the this imaginary, this road that I had in my head. Uh, Crybaby was the first step. Um, Edward Scissorhands was the second step, which put me on a, a sort of a foundation, if you will, um, establishing um, kind of the direction I was going. My agents didn't like it, <laughs> um, but I did. And uh, the more I got used to the process, the more I got interested in the process, the more I got more interested in trying to do things that were well, maybe not so done. Uh, I could try to approach characters from a different angle and also, you know, understand that whatever I do every time out of the gate, that it, um, you sort of have to be I think you need to feel like you're about to fall flat on your face, you know, when you approach something. I think you need to feel uh, failure hanging around potenti for potential, you know. I think you need to be in a corner sometimes to to fight your way out and 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 sort of find uh, the things that you want to do as opposed to what the studio wants you to do in terms of the approach to the character or whatever. 
is is it is it hard to find good stuff just because the industry is so money driven and more often than not the script's not even that important this is always about who's the director and and the actor and how good was his last film how much did it gross is, is it has it been easy to you to easy for you in your career to find good scripts or has it been hard at times um no i mean there are great scripts out there um there are great scripts out there from from really terrific, like very very talented writers. They just don't happen to be known. So nobody, uh, nobody in agencies or production companies are jumping at these these scripts. Um, everyone is the studio system. Obviously, is very <laughs> it's in uh, an interesting flux right now. Um, because of the COVID and all, but uh, you know the, st the studios, uh, when they dictate what um, what they want as a final product, um, to me that was a ridiculous. <laughs> that was a ridiculous. It's a ridiculous thing to think of a result before you've taken your first step on the journey, you know? Mm. Um, so, on my journey, for example, on Pirates with Disney, from the very first second that they saw me, they, <laughs> they, um, they were scared to death. <laughs> they were nervous, you know? Um, yeah, they were afraid, of, they didn't think that anyone would understand a word that Captain Jack said. I got calls from, you know, upper echelon Disney people asking me if, is the character drunk? Are you drunk? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the thing with the hands? What's this? What's all that? And what is he saying? And why is he like that? Is he drunk? <laughs> is he, is he, is he? Uh, it's screwy, something's wrong up there. <laughs> Is he gay? You know. And fortunately, uh, I had the answer right then and there. Since she said that, I said, "But Nina, don't you know that all my characters are gay?" <laughs> Which, of course, worried her a lot more. <laughs> um, that their um, apprehension to what I was doing. I wasn't discouraged in the in the slightest. I know that sounds weird, um, but I actually, you know, I, I really, you know, I I believed in what I had come up with as a character. I believed in it, and uh, wasn't prepared to change it. And I told him that y you're welcome to fire me. You got to pay me, <laughs> but you're welcome to fire me. It's okay. I understand. It's scary. I understand. But if you trust me, yeah, I mean, you don't get anywhere if you don't take the risk, right? If you don't leave your house, you're not going to uh, find that crock of gold, as it were. Um, so yeah, I uh, it didn't discourage me at all. In, in fact, it's happened several times with studios, mostly, uh, where it gets the character gets them worried. It it I find it it fuels me, you know. It fuels me. It, f it 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 gives me. I know that if they're worried that I'm doing my job correctly, do you know, <laughs> if they're scared, that means that that I'm doing something that they find obtuse and unpleasant for their precious three act structure. Because I try to ruin that with the character, you know, that's that's my job. So yeah, um, that kind of thing fuels you, you know. It just makes you want to show them all the more. So when they asked me to bring it down, I turned it up, um, which is the right thing to do, I, I think.
Uh, yeah, I just, I just think it's admirable I have people working in the industry, and it's just hard when you have all these people around you and everyone wants to make money and push you in a direction. So to be able to do something that y you love and obviously follow the art, uh, I think, is, is, an, is an achievement. Um, we're almost at the end, unfortunately, but I'd love, to, shall we uh, get the audience I to look potentially? I'd love to, yeah, if anybody wants um, to um, If anyone me. has a question for Johnny, mm -hmm. um, ooh, there's, I think that lady was really quick over there. Um, you can just uh, stand up and shout out loud. Thank you so much. Very kind. Oh, it, it felt, I mean, it felt, um, it felt beautiful, really. <laughs> I, there's a, Grindelwald to me is almost like some, like a, like a very, um, like some very thin, fragile uh, uh, piece of like, like crystal. Um, so there's this there's this um, element to his his speech that's uh, y y I, li I liked the idea of him speaking like uh, like that sound of you know when you tap a wine glass that dum, I wanted him to have this kind of uh yeah strange sort of elegance I in his uh uh speech pattern and al also somewhat almost almost like a you know television evangelist they speak in certain rhythms to to draw you in politicians and you know people of that ilk have been doing it for thousands of years. Um. <laughs> no, 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 not, not at all. Thank you. I'm nervous. Thank you. Now I'm nervous. Now <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for Great. asking that question. Uh, the lady, the blonde ladies, <laughs> wow. I thought that was ballsy. It was even more ballsy. <laughs> that's no, that's great. Uh, wh what can I do? I'll d sure. <laughs> we, 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 if if, um, um, if s this gentleman here, <laughs> that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, Stephen. Um, producer and uh, your story sounds uh, yeah it's it, it sounds I mean it's a subject matter it's it's a it's, uh, that's gonna be a, v a difficult um, thing for you to dive into hmm? yes uh, of course yeah 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 well I'm sorry uh, a lot of pain, I'm sure. Well, I'm so sorry for you having had to uh, live through, go through that kind of that that, that horror. Um, and I think you're very brave to uh, to have the impetus to turn it into something that is um, cathartic and helpful for you. And uh, helpful for others who've who've experienced the same kind of thing. So yeah, uh, I I I yeah, for sure. <laughs> just give just give him exchange. Uh, I think he even has cards. 
but 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 only He's you okay you can can hand out cards to everyone here okay john johnny can't help everyone as much as he would like to um yeah there was a gentleman over there help myself there's a final question hey man hi Oh man, Swiss chocolate! So kind. Well, thank you very much. That's very kind. Thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah, uh, with the the voices, yeah, the 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 sound, yeah, the sound that comes out of the character is, it, it, you know, it depends on. Uh, it depends on, in a way, the, the ingredients that you choose for this, whatever you're cooking. That is the character, you know. Um, like w one example, <laughs> uh, the character of Willy Wonka, for me, I, s I started thinking about um, children's show hosts, you know, little, those guys who talk, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Is everyone happy? That guy. <laughs> but then I, then I thought, well, that's an interesting place to start. What's the next layer of, this ing of the ingredients, you know? And then I thought, what would it, what would, <laughs> it c it's just a thought that came into my head. What would George W. Bush sound like? <laughs> <laughs> If he, if he were not stoned, but incredibly <laughs> stoned, <laughs> like incredibly stoned to the point where he's beyond any paranoia is not, he left that, that, that would have came like, you know, months before. So he's, uh, I wondered what he would be like just com absolutely as high as he could possibly be on marijuana. So the combination um, of these talk show hosts and George Bush stoned <laughs> turned into that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, <laughs> thank you. I, ca I, I, c I came in with that, um, thank God that was a film that it was uh, Tim Burton, who's w we've done I don't know how many, eight, eight or nine films together, and he's my brother and uh, family. Um, but even even Tim, when I showed up on set... A and started talking like, good morning, <laughs> star shining the earth says hello. <laughs> even Tim was like, wow. <laughs> wow. You really, <laughs> you're really onto something here. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it, that felt appropriate to me for that character. And then when you've got like the, um, another sort of, ex well, like w w Whitey Bulger, James Bulger, for example, because he was a Boston guy and this, I'd never heard his voice, but he had this intense sort of, the visual was enough for me, you know, to, I knew what he would sound like. Uh, yeah, they just come to you like a, a, a Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter was, uh, Christ, what was he? <laughs> I don't know what I saw. I just, I, 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 I saw this, uh, yeah, I just saw this sort of broken toy who was, who was uh, riddled with, um, um, what's that glue they used to use? for hats, to make hats. There was some special ingredient, I can't remember what it was, but it was uber poisonous and toxic. So hatters, back in the 19th century, it was orange, this stuff. A and uh, uh, 
they used to go mad from this stuff. It actually used to drive them crazy, so that's where the, the whole idea of the Mad Hatter came from. So I just thought, if this guy's this, this poisoned, this gone, um, he probably he'd probably be almost like a child, you know. So then he came like that, <laughs> <laughs> like a little bratty child. Yeah, I don't know. I should be fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was so. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thanks, that man. that great question, um, and Johnny. Thank you so much for taking the time. It's been really nice to get to know you oh and no, uh, Thank you. looking at, at everything that goes on in your life. Uh, it's so nice to see that you're so down to earth and taking the time to talk to us here in Zurich. So uh, I hope you're gonna enjoy this 16th Zurich Film Festival with your new film. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for Johnny Depp, everyone. Thank you. You're all very, very, very kind. Thanks a lot. I hope you, uh, I hope you see the film. I hope you like the film. Take care. Cheers. Please remain seated, or at least uh, let Johnny walk out. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. This is Sean. Hello.